believe I'm about to embark on this channel on a series of videos that are going to uh, basically be a long confessional about many years of really bad thinking and all of my new age sins. But let's start with self-help addiction. A couple weeks ago, I had this weird sort of, um, kind of a spiritual crisis about the realization that I <laughs> was absolutely addicted to self-improvement for many years. Did you see that? I just edited. Do you guys remember in the last video, I went, I ranted for about seven minutes about how I don't have ADHD? Yeah, I was wrong about that too. And I don't want to talk about it right now. But we're staying focused today. As always, I was inspired to make this video by another video I saw. Uh, a really fantastic YouTuber. His name is James Janney. About four years ago, apparently, he posted a video called The Toxic World of Self-Help. And for many years, every time I saw a thumbnail or just something on YouTube where someone alluded to the dark side or the bad things about the idea of self-help or the self-help industry, I always avoided it. I always clicked away. I never wanted to watch it. I thought it was just people being really negative and mean and too snarky, and I didn't want those people bringing down my positive good vibes. Go give that video a watch, it's brilliant. I have been watching The Healthy Gamer a lot. Dr. K, if you don't know who he is, just I'll put a link to his channel down below. Um, but he's a psychiatrist. He brought this topic up in a live stream the other day, and I thought it was so intelligent and insightful. When people tell you, oh, there's problems with self-improvement and self-help is kind of flawed and there's problems, there's a part of you, if you're very attached to a lot of self-improvement ideas and beliefs, the defensive part of us wants to be like, but shouldn't I want to make my life better? Because I always thought it was one thing or the other. I always believed that either I had to be hell-bent on making my life better and improving and completely changing myself, or I had to abandon my goals altogether and just sit and piously meditate and pray and be 100% grateful and happy and content with things exactly as they are. And if I wasn't completely happy with things the way they were, then by God, I was not grateful enough. I always believed it was one thing or the other. Turns out it's not. Turns out that is wrong, flawed, bad, black and white, all or nothing thinking. That is a cognitive distortion. Google it. It's fine that we want things to be better and we want ourselves to be better. The problem is that we attach our self-worth to the outcomes. And there's two problems with that. A, outcomes are never guaranteed. Everything in life is a risk. We don't really know what the future holds. But more importantly, the thing part of it I want to talk about is when I am chasing a better version of myself constantly, what is the message I am sending to myself? I am forever invalidating the version of me that sits here right now. I am telling myself over and over again that the version of me, the real person who is sitting here right now is unacceptable and it's horrible for our self-esteem. And when I heard someone say that and articulate that out loud, it was one of those light bulb flashing moments. It was like, oh my God, that's what I've been doing to myself for the last couple of years. I have been so obsessed with making my life better. Just going back and forth between, I have to make my life better, I have to make my life better. No, I have to accept everything the way it is, but I don't like things the way they are, so I have to make things better but I can't make things better, so I have to be okay with things the way they are, but I don't like the way things are, so I have to make things better. These things can exist simultaneously. I can feel unhappy with my circumstances. 
I can feel ha unhappy with my habits. I can feel like I want to do things differently. I can experience frustration that certain things in my life have not changed more quickly. I can have that experience and sit and be with it and allow it to be there without invalidating myself. Like the me that's here right now is good enough. And one of the things that James Janney said in that video that is incredibly smart and obvious when someone finally points it out and says it out loud is that the self-help industry, your favorite author, your favorite guru, is dependent on you to remain unhappy and unfulfilled. And I'm not saying that people do that intentionally. I'm not saying there's some great conspiracy and they're trying to make you stay miserable. I'm saying that industry is not profitable if you become happy and fulfilled. And you should always keep that in mind when you are reading a book about making your life better or watching YouTube videos about making your life better. People make money on this and whether intentionally or not, in some ways they are preying on your vulnerability and your desperation because you're upset and you hate your life and you're having a bad moment and it's okay to have a bad moment. Nothing great, no great new journey that any of us undertake for the most part is ever born out of anything positive. That's the truth. I am living the dream life of the Catherine of three years ago. I am living my absolute dream, the, the, the life I imagined and thought I could not have from three years ago. I am working a professional job with a regular schedule. I get to work from home. I have my own apartment. I paint, I got my walls painted every color of the rainbow like I like them. My kids are in school. Like, I, I can't even describe to you how different my life is now. Every problem I had back then that I was convinced there was no solution to has been solved. Literally every problem. It's not to say that I don't want the things I want. I do. I do still want a different job. I do want to live in a different city. I want friends in a community and, you know, I want to go, I want to date. I want to, like, I want things. Because peace and contentment and being happy with your life and yourself isn't about getting everything you want and never wanting anything again. We always want things and it's good and healthy and okay to want more things. You know, that's how we create new stuff. I don't have a problem with wanting things now, but just I can look around and appreciate and understand that things are so good right now. Things are so good. And I absolutely for a long time was not able to see that they were good because I was invalidating the me that is sitting here. I was always invalidating my present self by saying, well, you have to get a new job and you can't be happy until you have the new job and you can't be satisfied until you have the new job. And why haven't you gotten that yet? And you need to make this happen. And that's where all your energy has to go. The way to achieve happiness is not to run out and get all the things and hustle and work hard and get all the goals. The way to be happy is to accept ourselves and everything else the way it is right now. You don't have to like all of it. You don't have to like everything about your circumstances to accept them. You don't have to like everything about yourself to accept it. It's okay to not like something about yourself. There's a difference between like and love. And that's what Dr. K was really trying to say. It's not that you shouldn't want outcomes. It's that we have to separate our sense of value on this planet from the outcomes of our endeavors and our achievements. Because despite what self-help gurus preaching the law of attraction for the last however many years have taught us, just wanting something and just working really hard at something in and of themselves do not guarantee an outcome.
you can still fail. We have to take risks in things. And when we put all of our self-worth into the idea of achieving goal and the goal doesn't work out, we're left hating ourselves. And it's really unproductive. And even if the goal does work out, have you ever noticed this? This is kind of what I was talking about a minute ago. I've achieved all my previous self's goals. Hit every mark, checked every box, did every one of those things. And I was still unhappy because I was always chasing the future thing. And when you make your happiness about these external goals, you make your happiness about things that might never come to be and about things that can be taken away. Another really good example of this, this, has happened, this happens to a lot of people and this has happened to me once in my life. I had this idea once when I was younger that I needed to lose weight and then I would be happy. And I did. I lost a ton of weight. I was really thin. Everybody said I looked great. Everybody was amazed. Everybody, I got so many compliments. Guys flirted with me. You know, it was great. I loved that. But it turned into this absolutely neurotic obsession with staying thin because in my mind, my happiness had come from the weight loss. Therefore, if I ever gained weight again, the happiness would be taken away from me. So I had to come to an understanding recently that my unhappiness was not being caused by Delaware. It wasn't being caused by my job. It wasn't being caused by like someone in my family. It wasn't being caused by any of these circumstances outside myself. And it also wasn't being caused by me being lazy, me being stupid, me being ungrateful. The source of my unhappiness was a simple lack of self-acceptance. I was refusing to accept the person I am right now and the circumstances I have made for myself right now. I was refusing to accept myself as I was and it made me miserable. And if I had gotten some great job making six figures and we had moved out to Los Angeles and I fell in love with some perfect partner and we bought a big house together or whatever could have happened. If I had achieved all of those things and hit all those marks and done all those things, but still had not accepted myself, I would have just kept repeating the cycle. I would have just been, I, it, it would have just continued. I would have been paranoid that my partner would leave me. Done that before. I would have been afraid of losing my job. I would have been, I, I would have found reasons to be dissatisfied and afraid because I would have thought the happiness was all just because of these outside things. Does this make any sense? Does anybody know what I mean ever? Your problems are valid. The things that upset you about yourself and your life are real valid things. I'm just saying, we cannot attach our happiness to the solving of the problems. We have to stop putting all of our self-esteem into the idea of some improved future self while we completely negate and, and reject the self that is real, that is right here in three-dimensional reality. That's what we have to stop doing. So if you're still sitting here watching this, you are probably at this point asking yourself, okay, that sounds nice, but how do I actually do that? Not only am I not a mental health professional, I'm also not a professional YouTuber. It took me so damn long to record that last set that uh, my camera overheated, so now we're on the phone. It, clearly, I don't know everything. I don't have all the answers, okay? I do want to talk just for a minute about the things I have done that have worked for me. I'm going to repeat a lot of the things that James Janney said if you, if you watch that video. But what has been helpful to me has been 
taking care of my actual health, getting outside and exercising every day, going to bed earlier, waking up earlier, creating a schedule for myself to get tasks done, making a to-do list of things I want to get done in a give, on a given day or in a given week, um, and understanding that it's okay if the stuff doesn't all get done. Uh, meditation, moving away for me personally, I'm not saying you need to do this. I'm just saying, this is just real. So it's been going on with me, uh, moving away from new age, new thought, uh, spiritual teaching and focusing on meditation techniques and mental health stuff that is more scientific and evidence-based making a budget for myself and sticking to it. Meditation for me is the most important thing because what has been really, really helpful to me is um, just emotional regulation in general. And meditation really, really, hey, cat, what's up? What's up, bud? Um, emo um, just meditation, exercise, or prayer, whatever you do that helps you feel calm and centered really, really helps with um, impulse control and you know, just kind of feeling depressed and sorry for yourself. And I, for a while, I mean, I never spent like a ton of money. I don't have a ton of money to spend, but I did have some budgeting issues that were related to like, just, you know, calling Uber Eats because I didn't feel like cooking. And for a long time, I had like a lot of things delivered that I could have just gone to the store and picked up because I was like, it made me like too anxious to go to the grocery store. A lot of it was just stuff working on my mental health overall, following the advice of actual therapists and licensed professionals, also unplugging from the internet, really limiting the amount of time I spend looking at other people's lives on social media and um, just spending more time in my real life, even if it feels boring, even if I feel unhappy, even if it makes me feel sad or lonely or depressed, to just sit in my house. I have spent a lot of time just sitting and being still and being in my real three-dimensional environment. So that's about it. As I said, I don't, I don't claim to have all the answers or any of the answers. I'm not trying to give you advice about um, mental health. Really, these are the things that have been really, really helpful to me. So uh, go watch a James Janney video. It's worth a look. Go watch uh, The Healthy Gamer. And, um, I am gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go now. 